Hey guys, and welcome to a new series. I am here with Mojo and Zuri. Uh, I don't think we've all really actually played together simultaneously before. Not standalone, no. And hello, also. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Greetings. Hello you. Greetings. Where's Zuri? There, there he is. is. Hogging all the circuits. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, what this series is going to be, uh, based on the title, you can probably tell, uh, we're going to try to walk you through and uh, kind of be in more of an instructional series in regards to uh, creating a mega base and transitioning from kind of a mid-game stage and base to a higher level, uh, bigger base. I, I think a lot of people struggle to uh you know who may want to build a mega base and higher production numbers may struggle transitioning from this kind of medium-sized base to actually going into a larger mega stage uh you know like we might have had in mad science or the 15 sim i recall a lot of comments there you know asking like you know can you guys explain how how you actually got here and and you know what's needed to, tran to transition so we're going to try to focus on that in this series and have it be more instructional opposed to the just uh you know kind of paste down blueprints that just randomly appear in uh mad science and just have builds done without even showing how we got there yeah um one of the other some of the other questions that i re recall off the top of my head was also like how what why do we choose three eight threes in last series and three uh six threes in your map and you know why? Why do we using two four twos there and and two four two ten three ten threes here, things like that. Yeah, exactly. Kind of just the the whole design aspect behind it. Uh, I think a lot of people have questions about that and maybe struggle to get there themselves. So we hope that this will uh, kind of help you out with that. And uh, last quick note here is uh, Mojo, you have uh, done quite a lot of work and started at out started us out here at um, kind of a medium to large-ish um, belt-based factory here, just so we don't have to grind through early game again, because that's not really what this series is about. So we wanted to just kind of skip that whole thing that pretty much everyone's seen like 50 times. Yeah, and there's nothing much new to learn um, in a, well, relatively speaking, in a starter base. There's nothing, uh, and you don't want to start a, say, okay, let's ha learn how to do a starter base and then 40 episodes of burner mining drills. Right. There's not already like a hundred, you know, YouTube series on that exact thing or anything. Yeah, oh, yeah totally not. <laughs> so it's uh, not like, and it's also not like anyone's been requesting me to do vanilla starting out playthrough anytime recently as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're, we're started out here and uh, Mojo, he's built up some modules, some sp speed modules and stuff, but I think we wanted to start out with throwing down a productivity module build to kind of start us out and uh, I think we decided we're just going to kind of copy this one here for productivity modules. Yeah, this one seems to work. Um, these were built to make some um, power armor modules when I put them down originally in a very big hurry. Um, and the productivity ones were put down before that uh, productivity science. And as you can see, productivity ones are not going to cut it for a mega base, so we need something bigger. Yeah. So... And uh, also, we should mention, an uh, important point, is we are using RSO just, I believe you just used the standard RSO settings. Yeah, I did at one point, and then I lost the settings, so it's just start standard ones now. It had the biodas on default, but in, I don't have much motivation to change it back um, to default okay. from the, uh, to the RSO biodas. All right, so we have, we're using RSO, and then also, as you probably noticed for a second when I opened my crafting menu, we are using the SpaceX or Space Extension mod um, simply to give us a goal and, and something to actually work towards is uh, some of the previous series, <laughs> Cough relearning the game for 15, um, <laughs> did not have a goal and kind of just fell on its face. So we decided to put SpaceX in here. It's not SpaceX Plus, just standard SpaceX to give us something to work towards in an actual ending. 3311, if I recall correctly. I believe so, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, okay. let's just uh, get this building. So, there's a blueprint there. Should we perhaps... I think you're missing a steel axe there. Spun it. How about another one? Okay, I see what you're doing. Okay. And get rid of these bottom machines. 
I don't even have. I don't have any personal robot parts with <laughs> my gear. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna start here with setting these modules up, and I guess while we're doing this, if we can build and talk at the same time, um, it may be kind of an interesting discussion to talk about modules and a module grind and what you you know the options you have with it or if you want to do it at all and such because we were kind of discussing this earlier so uh so i know i might, might as well just thoughts. leak my spreadsheet or something or yeah yeah there will be a link in the description for a spreadsheet um this has done a very cool one in regards to what benefits the most from taking modules um but before we get to that, uh, I feel like we should maybe just discuss the module grind itself in terms of like, you know, in our past series with Will and stuff, we spent a good 15 hours just grinding thousands of modules out before we even build anything, any builds on a mega stage. And uh, I know Mojo at least has some, <laughs> some thoughts in regards to that. Oh, I can't stand it anymore. Because usually what happens in those series is I like the, uh, when the series, the uh, stream ends, I sit in the game for another five hours just running the game, um, building up more and more modules. And it's time, and I've found that it's time, like, a mod, you don't need a module to run a, a mega base build. It'll run fine without it. So I think the approach is backwards, where instead of building the mod, using this base, which has extremely limited production, to build thousands upon thousands and thousands of modules, um, you do it the other way around, where you build the build, you know, your mega smelting, your mega uh, green circuits, red circuits, blue circuits, and get that to do your modules. Instead of letting the starter base do the modules, and then you do the assembly machines, and then the... So, you know, I think it's completely backwards, that approach. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you completely here, actually. Yeah, it, uh, it, it just, it makes it, well, a grind, and it just... Pretty much, yeah. I'm gonna just agree with Mojo as well. I can't really say much else better. It, um, it, it takes a long time, and it, I would, I would say, is a very high potential for burnout just trying to get the modules because it, it just takes so long on a base with this amount of throughput and production. Uh, and then, actually, that's kind of a good lead-in into Zuri's spreadsheet which you've done um, that kind of shows the cost benefit and such of putting models in different stages. And that's kind of another reason I think maybe to not do a module grind because typically like one of the first things you would put modules in if you had, you know, ground them out is smelting. Uh, but is there, you, you even were surprised once you <laughs> figured out with the spreadsheet that I guess smelting is actually one of the worst things you can module in terms of uh, its benefit. Yeah, it, you're getting per machine something like 0.1 material per second. And if I remember correctly, these cost a total of uh, 14, 1300 materials a total. So like 130 or 13,000 seconds worth of machinery time before it pays for itself. Or something ridiculous like that. I'd just, you know, quick estimation real quick. But yeah, it's really bad. I, I don't think I'll ever put them in as a first step anymore, ever. Yeah, the um, definitely recommend checking out the spreadsheet. It's very interesting. Uh, you know, like one of the highest beneficial things would be, uh, you know, rocket parts or a silo. I mean, you get a massive benefit from that. Uh, you know, most of the sciences as well. Um, and circuits as well, because they're a very high, uh, like resource usage thing. Um, so you benefit science from... labs. Don't forget the science labs. Oh yes. No, don't labs. forget that. Extremely important. Do you, know, do you know what's surprising actually is how far down red circuits is. It's, um, the plastic is actually worth more. Which is interesting. That might have to do with just the, the like, uh, material requirements and the speed of them both that maybe overall plastic actually uses more materials in the same time so benefits more from the modules i'm confused yeah. what are you guys doing with these belts 
I'm moving oh, okay. the green circuit to make in line. It, it did a bit of a wibbly wobbly. Oh dear. So I'm straightening it out. So I refuse just... to have anything in my toolbar besides a blueprint and a deconstruction planner, so that's what I'm doing. I was saying, you're just like waiting for the bots to do all the work. Yeah, let the bots do the work. You're so slow. It'll get done eventually. Yeah. Uh, so, kind of... To... You, you did that wrong, by the way. Uh, who? Me? Yeah, you. <laughs> 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 well, someone, you guys were taking so long, I just went with it. <laughs> someone cut it at the source. <laughs> Anyone need blue circuits? How oh, the bots handle it. Wow. <laughs> All right. Um, so kind of after this, uh, it, it kind of goes into more of a planning stage because I feel, at least for me personally, um, I don't know what you guys experience, but for me personally, it's actually pretty important to at least spend some time planning what you're going to do for a mega base stage. Because if you just kind of go from this and just kind of willy nilly just start throwing stuff down, um, but bigger, it leads into a lot of problems later down the road, which some problems, I mean, you know, it's just going to happen. But if you don't really put any thinking into it, you know, the first stages, you end up with these massive problems later on that actually take more time to fix than had you just done it right to begin with. Yeah, you always want to have a solid plan um, for building the mega base, and lots of space too. Space, I think, is actually probably one of the most important resources um, sometimes that people don't consider. Uh, for instance, we're planning on using a periphery or trade network that's going to be separate so we can use uh, that subnetting idea we came up on some of the workshop videos. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a different approach than most of the previous series where we've done the huge kind of massive shove everything through a couple T-junction train network uh, and, and do the subnetting that me and Zuri went over in a workshop where you kind of just have these dedicated separate rail networks for different products that never really uh, interact with each other and is much better for train throughput. I've also been working on a map with Zenith recently, uh, which applies a, a similar principle, and that's been turning out quite well so far. Very nice. And the plate trains alone um, carry twice, effectively twice the material that an ore train carries. And so you already. Um, getting a huge benefit um, by separating them out. You suddenly go from needing, potentially go from needing a four lane rail system down to a two lane rail system. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it can even be beneficial, uh, depending on what kind of scale you want to go, it can be beneficial to separate out even past that if, if you want, like plates going to something very high demand like circuits, potentially even on its own segregated network that never even hits the main line because uh, even though the plate trains are more condensed for some really high demand things uh, that can actually still be a lot of trains trying to go through your main network. Yeah. And they, and they're trains that just get in all the other trains way. They don't, because they go, you know, particularly uh, a good example is to be green circuits, which have an enormous demand for copper and iron. And these trains just don't need to get in every other train's way. Yeah, exactly. So, at this stage, I suppose we could start figuring out an area, maybe doing something, some planning. Because once you once you're at this this kind of medium base stage, that that is the next thing you probably want to move on to is is kind of planning out where you may want your smelters, because that's usually where you start, since you can't really do anything without plate. Um, and and maybe yeah. how you're gonna run some of your trains or, or where you may want your outposts because obviously you probably don't want to be building your smelters like right on top of where you might want outposts. And smelters are also going to be the, the, probably one of the biggest builds so we need to plan out a large amount of space and it's going to determine where everything else is particularly with the subnetting. Yeah, especially with the subnetting that's actually really important. 
So you're just going around clean, <laughs> cleaning up the, the extra belt pieces. <laughs> I never finished tidying this place up. I, I kind of noticed we also need a, some extra care on these uh, green circuit bills, it seems. Oh yeah, the copper isn't quite getting all the way down here. It's not a copper shortage, is it? Oh no, it's full belts again. The, there is a little bit of a shortage of, um, of uh, plate coming in. I am sort of abusing the extractor a little bit here, which probably explains yeah. a lot of it. Yeah, it's, you're using a 50% extractor as a 100% extractor for two belts, and it doesn't quite work that way. No. You may also notice that um, there's two different circuit builds, a one-to-one -one and a three-to-two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Change your mind halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> um, experimenting. Yeah, it looks like this one was made for possible upgrades with beacons, actually. That's what it looks like to me. Beacons and productivity moduling. But um, it was something that I've been thinking about with 15. One of the first things I noticed was if you productivity everything, suddenly your that enormous early game resource drain goes down. But there's actually not a lot of need for this anymore because apart from the beacons because of the low payoff for green low-ish payoff for green circuits so there's not much incentive anymore to actually productivity it yeah and even lower for uh cabling evidently yeah hmm. and so the, those uh modules are better off just being turned into higher tier ones um and put back into science instead of for green circuits that reminds me, where's the science labs? Ah, they're down by me. Oh, so you just, oh, I see. So you ran the science, like, opposite down the whole bus. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's fine. Well, we definitely need to put the Module 3s in here as fast as possible, because this was one of the highest payoffs, if not the highest payoffs behind uh, rocket launches. Yeah. Yeah. Everything, um, all the science already has productivity modules in it. I think it was actually one of the last things I did uh, when I was building this base. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, this is, is actually extremely I actually impactful. quite like this. Oh, this design? Yeah. Yeah. Very compact. And the whole um, science bus, I, I don't know why I'm fond of it, even though it's kind of derpy. I don't know, I kind of <laughs> like it. It's one of the first things I did in my first 15 playthrough. I was like, why don't I belt these all back down and you know, have all the labs and productions all compacted in in one place? No, I like it. I've used something similar before, too. Because it keeps everything expandable, too. And that I like. Mm, expandability is extremely important. Right, important question. Isn't there a seventh uh, science pack we need to shove in here somehow? Um, space packs? Yeah, we could shove it on the outside. Uh, I didn't actually plan this space to do rocket launches, but we can do rocket launches if we like. It might be a little bit painful trying to launch more than a couple rockets, if any, from this base. Well, let me let's look at research here. So you have, so it looks like we're still missing some Kovrex stuff, but we've actually decided we're going to go solar, I believe, is what we decided on. Um, yeah, majority solar, simply, if not exclusive. Yeah. Um, and I know some people may be disappointed that we're not doing nuclear. However, um, we're doing solar, one, to kind of change it up a little, and two, for the uh, non-lag out <laughs> um, benefit it has. Solar is insanely better for game performance than nuclear is. Yeah, I mean, pretty much every previous playthrough where we've had nuclear, we've either ha it's been hacked or modded in some way to improve the performance of it, which goes to show just how bad it is. Yeah, it's it's really not not great at all. Um, and we decided, I think we kind of settled on a thousand packs a minute, maybe less, depending how things go, but. Um, the SpaceX research alone, I think, is uh, even at a thousand packs a minute, you said it's still like 13 hours of straight research. Yeah, it's about 13 hours of continuous research. Um, 
particularly um, your FTL contributes quite a bit. Hmm. 125,000 uh, research. And then, um, oh, that reminds me, looking at it, um, it's not all equal in the packs. So I'm looking at fast and light propulsion, and it's two red packs, two green packs, and then one blue, one purple, one high tech. Oh, uh, yeah, quite a few of them are like that. Astronomics and Spaceship Command. Actually, I think almost all of these late ones are protection fields. Life support. So that's something we'll have to factor in, is allow for twice as much production of red and greens. Hmm. Yeah, that, that actually is an important thing. I'm glad we realized that now. <laughs> that could have been embarrassing. Yeah. Ooh, is this a uh, Zuri layout? It's the Mark III Charlie. Mark III Charlie? Wow. Ah. Very nice. I just wanted to put at least one down so we can get something going so you guys can copy it and put wherever we need to put it at the end. Good idea. Need a bit of tweaking to get those power poles and radars out of it. Oh yeah, there's... <laughs> I just blueprinted it. I'm like, why did he put like a random turret in here in these spaces? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Thought you had some crazy plan or something. Alrighty, so looking at the map, we kind of figured out, we, we thought, you know, again, we need space. We're kind of looking at rails. You know, you want to figure out where maybe you want your rails to go, where you actually have space to do stuff. And uh, this map, although it's a very cool seed, is actually lacking, at least in the explored part, a large landmass. So we thought maybe like northwest-ish or south potentially yeah they're both looking fairly promising um for land mess i don't suppose you automated tanks and shells uh, not as such <laughs> <laughs> they're the important questions aren't they yes he needs well, a you know, tank if we need me to go clear out enemies and such it's a lot easier with the proper tools that is right as it, it, you, to clear enemies, you need the right tools for the job. Hmm. Like nukes. Might be well before we get nukes. Unfortunately. Alright, so currently it looks like we're running primarily on Steam. You had a little solar placed. Yeah, it was a little emergency... Um sold the place down because I ran out of starter coal. <laughs> oh dear. That was a bit of a whoopsie. It happens, even to the best of us. So, um... See, so yeah, I don't know if we'd like to start trying to plan something out, or if you guys want to just keep maybe just tidying up or collecting materials for this episode. Um, I was thinking, do you want to have a look at... Um, have you seen all of the base yet? Got familiar with it? Uh, yeah, I pretty much know where most of it is. You seen the oil base? I'll accept that. Oh, I see now. You really, uh, you, you wow, you did put productivity models in almost everything. Yeah, nice. oh, I actually missed a few here. Fortunately, I actually saw Madzuri's spreadsheet a little bit before, like just as I was finishing it, so I started productivity moduling um, according to that sheet. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So some plastic and batteries and acid, I believe, was some of the most important stuff. Yeah, looking at oh, this, it's um, really high up there. It's one of these and missing modules as well. So, let's see, how what, what, how are you doing, how are we doing on oil? We have oil 3, which means there must be a oh, 4, wow. Yeah, there's quite a bit of oil. The oil actually started out on trains, it never actually piped to the oil base. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, so it looks like oil 2 and, I don't even, where's oil? Oh, there's oil 1. 
it needs a um, power pole again. The poor thing gets cut, its power gets cut all the time. <laughs> Seems like it's fully backed up as well, so oil is adequate for now. Yeah, and this is actually maybe something important to touch on is uh, you'll notice the viewers that uh, he set up pumps and tanks here with no pipes in between. Uh, this is important because the pumps, I think, Zuri, you have rough numbers in your head. The pumps pump like ex insanely fast, um, like way more than a pipe can actually uh, throughput. Yeah, I, last I tested it, it was very early in 0 0.15, and I measured it at attempting to move 160 fluid a tick. Yeah, and there's 60 ticks in a second, so... <laughs> That's about 9,600 oil a second that it's trying to move, but yeah, there's no way it's going to happen unless it's from something that contains more than that to something that contains more than that. Right, so that's the reason we we do this, um, is this actually really helps just the flow rate and unload speed, or load speed, depending where it is, uh, but by not having pipes in here, because it, I mean, each one of these can hold 25,000, so it can just kind of dump extremely quickly, like all the liquid from your tanker into the things here, whereas if you put pipes, it greatly limits it to uh, pipe throughput. Oh yeah, um, if I was to have a single piece of pipe in between each of these pumps, into a tank, the unload speed would drop off dramatically. Uh, we'd go from, you know, three or four seconds up to 20 seconds thereabouts. I can't remember. That might, I couldn't give you an accurate number off the top of my head, but it's dramatically lower. It might be a little bit less than that. I also wouldn't do more than two pumps. Even one, tum one, tum one pump is um, pretty quick. Yeah. And definitely not three. Three is just ridiculous. It's just overkill. <laughs> Train, train's empty in like two seconds. Yeah, you don't need more than one pump since it's trying to pump almost 10k a second. Okay, usually one is even sufficient. Um, but one last note for this is it is kind of... Uh, it is important to have uh, typically at least as many tanks as is equal to your uh, tanker. Otherwise, it's going to kind of defeat the purpose of unloading it quickly if you only have, like, one tank because it has to wait for the tank to, like, drain low enough to actually finish unloading the thing since, you know, this is three tanks worth. So if you only have one, it's going to sit here until it can fit three into one after it's been drained. Yeah, in this case, I've set it up so that two train loads worth uh, can fit here. Mm-hmm. Well, as a side note, as you can see, quite a few of these trains are com almost coming in fairly empty. They're actually set to run on a timer. I think it was 30 seconds or 60 seconds loading and then heading back over here. Right. I just checked. It's full or empty in 60 seconds, if not. Yeah, so because you, you, you've got this train here, this one that's full, just so um, it doesn't sit here for too... or get stuck here, sitting here for too long, um, which I've had problems with it nudges off eventually. Hmm. This one, it doesn't matter so much, but on my uh, Megabase, I had problems because it has a load balancing unloader. Um, if one gets stuck here, then another refinery eventually runs out of oil uh, on some occasions. So I like to keep them moving. Right. So kind of thinking more into the a, li a little bit ahead into the smelting and outpost stuff uh one important thing that when you're trying to plan out your mega smelters is <laughs> as we discovered in the mad science series it is important to think about decide and keep a solid decision on your train size uh yes otherwise you're going to spend endless hours rebuilding your entire smelter if you decide that what you thought before didn't work uh, that also comes back to pl th properly planning out um, your smelting build itself. Yeah, exactly. That's probably actually one of the things that should have the most thought put into it because it's your building block, and as Mojo mentioned previously, it's probably the biggest build you're going to do, so tearing it up and revamping it is 
absolutely horrible. <laughs> Remember that time in the 15 sim when we tore up the the smelter for that like three times? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I was there. I think I was eating. <laughs> Conveniently. Like... That went through three iterations, and I had to be there for the whole lot. Damn. That was actually... A lot of that um, wasn't recorded or on the stream as well. Purpose. There's a lot of things in that map that happened off stream. Like, K same with K-Solar. Like, nobody... People saw it on stream and on recording, just him building solar, but nobody saw the eight hours after the stream, which was all in itself like six or eight hours long, just building solar. Mm-hmm. So, uh, thinking about it, then, with the smelters, uh, what, what, what are you guys thinking... Like, I don't know, Zuri, do you have some sort of train size in mind that you prefer to use, or Mojo? Uh, my preference is for any combination that is a multiple of four, because that fits my track blueprints um, the best. Well, then you're going to hate my suggestion, which is any <laughs> odd number to make the opposing track symmetrical. That in itself could work, though. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, but when they pull in different directions. So like a, a two, like if I was to pluck, and pluck a, a random size, like a two, seven, two. Yeah, I was thinking two, five, two is probably uh, more than big enough for the inner workings because uh, you won't be or on the inner workings. You can keep the outside uh, much bigger if you want. Two, five, two. I can't say I've ever done that, but hey, let's try it. Yeah. Uh, so then, yeah, that's probably more than enough for the inner workings. So then for the outer workings, uh, it doesn't have to be this way, but uh, I usually find that a size, at least for the orb trains, that is like double the plate trains works well, because uh, if you do put productivity in the smelters, it works out to be like a perfect conversion, uh, depending on the size variance. That's why like 3.10.3s to 3.6.3s work so well for that because it converts perfectly. Yeah, it translates very nicely. I don't know if that... I don't know what size would transition into a five-wagon thing. It could use either, like, 393 or a 3103 still. Oh, 3103 is not an odd number, I don't think. Right, that's 16. No. 393 is because they're all multiples of threes. That works. 393. All right, we're doing it. <laughs> I'll have to modify the blueprint um, again. I might uh, replace it with the 383. Or replace the 383 with the three, uh, 393. Yeah, and the, the inner workings, we may not even need the blueprints just because they're going to be more direct line type of things rather than a yeah. whole rail network. All right, interesting. Well, that that should be fun. Three, three, nine, threes. It's gonna take me a little bit to actually remember it. And two, five, twos. Sounds like a plan. Yep. Awesome. Well, uh, this is probably a good place to end. We kind of have our train size in mind for the smelters. We can design them around that, and then obviously design the outposts around that. That's why it's important to decide that initially. And yep, uh, that's good for breaking ground. Yeah, definitely. And we're, we're collecting materials, we're making sprout modules, we'll have to throw those in science, we probably have almost enough at this point, but uh, I think we will call this one there. Any uh, ending comments you guys would like to add for the first episode? Nope. Not much beyond stay tuned for the next one. Yeah, so there you go guys. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, if you have any questions or comments or anything, uh, leave them down in the comments, link to Zuri's spreadsheet will be in the description and until next time we will uh catch you later take care see ya later